Hello, Richard Knudsen here again. In this session, I want to show you three of my favorite tricks with dynamic CRM goal management. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'll cover three main topics. First, I want to show you an interesting use of goals that doesn't really have anything to do with goals per se. Effectively, you can use goals as a calculation engine, calculating aggregate values based on some underlying detail records. Next, I'll show you some ways you can customize goals. It's easy to think that the goal entity is less customizable than other record types, but it turns out this isn't really the case. I'll show you a customization that's particularly useful in combination with the aggregate calculation capability I just mentioned. Finally, there are lots of ways you can use workflows in combination with goals. I'll show you one here that takes one of those calculated aggregate values I mentioned and automatically rolls it up to a parent record. To understand why this is useful, let's think about some simple questions you might want answers to. How much revenue or margin does a customer generate? Or how many activities does your sales team perform? Or how many hours have been spent on a particular project? Now in dynamic CRM, we've always been able to write reports to get this kind of information. And starting with CRM 2011, we can easily build charts and dashboards too. But sometimes you might just want to see the number. For example, it might be convenient to simply have a feel for all time sales on the account form and have it dynamically update to reflect all your sales to the account. Dynamic CRM doesn't have calculated fields, and it might not be immediately obvious how you do this. But as you become familiar with goals in CRM 2011, you might realize they really get you part of the way. Typical goal management scenario goes something like this. For a specific time period, you compare actual and in-progress values say one in open opportunities against a target value that you'd enter. And the actual and in progress values are calculated automatically. So in effect, this does give us a calculated field. So what we can do is create a real boiled down simple goal record. Effectively one with no real target value or time period, but still exploit the automatic calculation of the actual value. So let's take a look at how to do it. The approach that I'll show you is really pretty general and it usually uses essentially the same pattern. To calculate all time aggregates, we'll just use an arbitrarily long time period for the goal, effectively removing start and stop dates as a binding constraint. And if we don't care about comparing to a target value, we just set that to zero and uh, forget about it. Get it out of the way and just look at the aggregate that we want calculated. Finally, with these, we'll usually need a roll-up query. So this is a good example of how to use roll-up queries. So let's uh, dive in the demo and take a look at this. Okay, I'm in my demo CRM here. And let's start by taking a look at the accounts I follow. I've already slightly customized the account entity, adding this all-time sales field you see here, adding it to this view. So in the example that I'll walk through, this is the aggregate field. We want to use the goal management functionality to help us calculate automatically. Now I've already created a goal that does this for one of these accounts. So let's take a look at it. Navigate to goals in the sales area. Select active goals. So let's take a look at this one first. This one I've already built for Litware. And then I'll build one for the other account so you can see how it's done. So we'll open up the goal form. And here you see the Litware all-time sales goal. And the first thing that I want you to look at is the goal metric. I created a custom goal metric called actual revenue. If I click it to open it up here, first thing to notice is it specifies the goal data type, amount data type of money here. More importantly and more interestingly, it's only got one roll-up field. You can see that here. And this specifies opportunity as the source record type. Let's open the form, this, so you can see what it does. You 
can see here it points to the opportunity record type and it specifies the actual revenue field as the field that will roll up and it also says that the state should have a value of one in order for it to roll up confusingly referred to here as state it's in the CRM UI that's the status uh, so a status of one is going to make this roll up and notice that the date field the actual close date field it is required but remember in a normal goal scenario the role of that field is slightly different than it is here in the normal goal scenario it's the actual close date field that will constrain the records that roll up so that only those with the value of the actual close date between the start date and the end date of the goal will roll up it works differently here as you'll see in a second so let's close out of here and then let's close the goal metric form and return to the goal itself so on the goal record I got a custom time period and it goes from 1 1 1990 to 12 31 1999 that's what I meant about an arbitrarily long period effectively what this does is it turns this into a calculator for all opportunities regardless of when they close I want just all-time revenue for lit one so that's how we do that and then look at the target this is a little odd if you're used to the standard goal functionality but we're not concerned about the target here we just want the calculated actual value so I can set the target to zero now how do we constrain this so that only litware numbers roll up well that is the role of the goal criteria so let's take a look at that so since I want to see all revenue for litware no matter who owns the record I don't want to select this owned by goal owner I want all selected for the record set for roll up option then I need to add a special roll up query to specify that only litware opportunities roll up that's the role of this here now rather than take a look at that I'm going to create a new goal for the grand store the other account so you can see the whole thing soup to nuts so let's uh, do a save and new and this is litware all-time sales so this other one will create will be grand store all-time sales I will be the goal owner and the goal metric remember is going to be actual revenue let's go select that goal metric now let's use our convention of going from 1 1 1990 to 12 31 21 99 so we get all dates now that will set that target to zero go ahead and save it and once it's saved let's go create our goal criteria I want the record set for a roll-up to be all and now I need to create this roll-up query to specify that records for the grand store will be included so I want to click new here I'll create one on the fly and if you haven't worked with roll-up queries before this is a good example of how you might use them specify opportunity as the record type and I want to call this grand store sales will be consistent and all I need to do here is choose potential customer equals the grand store and this is it filter that down select the grand store this is all we need to do I can click view records and even if there were some open opportunities for the grand store that showed up here this query is still going to be right for my roll-up query because remember the goal metric specifies that only one opportunities are to be included here so in this case the role of the roll-up query is, sim is is not to filter on status it's just to filter out all opportunities that are not in this case tied to the grand store as the potential customer so that's the role of this roll-up query in this scenario here now let's go ahead and save this and as soon as we save it I'll recalculate it because I'm by default goals calculate once every 24 hours and I just created this so it hasn't been calculated yet so I'll click recalculate and as soon as I recalculate we'll be able to check and look at the participating records here on the left hand side to make sure that it's uh, calculating correctly so let's click on actuals and we can see that we have six hundred and eighty three thousand three hundred eighty five dollars and thirty seven cents all time with the grand store if I click on the participating records 
see we have these four opportunities. And let's look at the closed opportunity, the one opportunities view. That would be a better view for this. You can see here the all-time nature of this, right? So we've got opportunities from that closed in 2010, 2011, and 2012. So that's how we do the first part of our three-part uh, scenario here, which is now we've got these goals that basically play a role of calculating. So if I just click Save and Close, I've got these two goals here. If I refresh this view, I might, in a scenario like this, probably do a custom view of this so I don't see things like the target and the percentage achieved which really aren't relevant for this calculator scenario. So that's the first part. So remember the next thing that I said I was going to do was show you how to customize goals so that we could make in this case what we want is we want to make the goal record a child of the account record so that I can make this goal here a child of the grand store account record. And you'll see in a minute, once we do that, we'll be able to have a workflow that will automatically roll up this value here, the actual value from the goal, and populate our custom field on the account record. So let's customize this form. And we'll add a lookup field. And we're going to make it look up to the account field. Remember, we're going to create the goal record as a child record of account. I'll click New Field. We'll just call this Account. Type of lookup. And we're looking up count, which is conveniently the first one in this alphabetical list. And I'll use this convention here, goal account. So that's the name of the field. So now we've created, we've customized the goal record so that it's a child of account. Okay, so we've created this lookup field, called it account. It's going to be a lookup to the account record type. And for now, I'll just drop this here. Just drag it and drop it out under the general section of the form, although in a kind of in a production scenario, I'd probably create a separate section maybe for custom fields just to kind of flag the difference between this and the, the default goal form. But let's go ahead and save and close. And then publish. Okay, now with our customizations published, I've close the form and we'll reopen it. And now you can see the lookup to account is on the goal form. So I'll attach the Grand Store all-time sales goal record to the Grand Store account. And I'll do the same thing for the Litware all-time sales goal, attaching it to Litware. So now we've accomplished the second of the three things that we want to do. We've got these records attached to the appropriate account records and now all I need to do is have a workflow that rolls up the actual value from the goal to the all-time sales field on the account record. And we have a natural way to do that. I'll go to settings. We'll make a new process. And we're going to make this one a workflow. It'll run automatically. It's going to be run against the goal record type. So I'll select goal and we'll call this calculate account aggregates. So leave open the possibility of calculating other aggregates besides just the just this one. And I'm going to give it a scope of organization. And I'm going to run it not when the goal record is created, but when fields change on the goal record. And I want this one to be triggered by a change in the actual money value, because that's the field on the goal record that's being updated on that 24-hour basis by default. So it will happen automatically. And this will be one of those workflows that just is, is triggered basically once a day and this would actually be a good candidate for automatically de deleting the completed workflow job in order to save disk space you know once it's up and running but at first I won't just in case we need to do any troubleshooting on this so we could also do this by the way 
make it available as an on-demand process if I did want to run it you know outside the 24-hour period I'll do that for now and this will just have one step I suppose what I probably do is I'll put a conditional check in here to make sure that this goal record is the child of an account record so I'm going to make a condition to check to see if the goal account lookup contains data if it does it means that this goal record that we're on is a child of an account record and in this case I can update a record so I'll do an update record step and what I want to do here is not update the goal record but I want to update the account record so we can take advantage of the fact that the workflow engine has a data context that knows about the current record that we're on, any records created by the workflow, and any parent record types. So I can update the account. And remember the field that we want to update on the account record. It's not on the account form, so it's going to be in the additional fields section. Here's the all-time sales field. And what I'm looking for here is actual money. That's the field that's getting calculated on the goal record. So we'll go ahead and pop it in there. And then we're pretty much done. I could uh, do better descriptions and things like that. But for now, let's just activate this. So this workflow will run automatically whenever the goal is recalculated, but since I also expose this for on-demand use, we can go ahead and navigate to goals and I'll just run it against both of those goal records. So I select both those goal records, run the calculate account aggregates workflow, and now we let those spin. And if I vamp long enough here, I can usually get it so that I navigate back to accounts and as soon as I select the appropriate view, if I get lucky, the all-time sales numbers are already recalculated. So my timing was good that time. So you see what we've got here is we've got this now ability. So these will calculate anytime the goal is updated, which it will be by default every 24 hours. So these things will always be um, updated or keep in mind if I make a change here so that these goals so if I recalculate one of these goals with new numbers in them, those changes will roll up too so if I go to let's go to an opportunities let's go to opportunities and I'll close a record as one for one of these accounts so here I've got a $25,000 deal for litware we'll open it and I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see the results more easily. So 250,000. And I'll go ahead and close it as one. Okay, so that's a one opportunity now. And if I go to the account view, so that was just a little over 1 million. That goal hasn't been recalculated yet for Litware. So if I open up the Litware all time sales goal, if I look at the actual records here, I can see that this $250,000 opportunity that we just closed is in here, but the goal hasn't been recalculated yet. So even though it's in here, that can be a little confusing at first. It, doesn't, it hasn't been calculated up to the actuals yet until I do this. So I'll go ahead and click Recalculate. And now if I go down to the actuals, you'll see that it's now $1.3 million. So we can see it's calculated. And since this change in this actual money field is what triggers the workflow, if I go back out to the account grid, sure enough, that workflow ran, you can see that we recalculated that all-time sales number here. So I hope this was helpful. I think this is an interesting application of goals that's a little bit outside the, the norm, basically using the calculation engine 
without really the goal aspect of it. So this is actually a, a pretty clean way to calculate aggregates like this. And it's pretty generalizable. It's not just, uh, you know, it doesn't have anything specifically to do with accounts. You can use this for lots of different, different scenarios. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, here are a couple ways you can learn more about topics like these. First, I'm presenting on related topics at a couple of upcoming conferences in the fall of 2012. First at the Extreme CRM 2012 show in Las Vegas during the first week of October, and then at the CRM UG Summit in Seattle. It's the week of October 15th. Here are the websites for those conferences, and I hope to see you there. Next, in my book, Building Business with CRM Using Processes in Microsoft Dynamic CRM, is chock full of topics like these, specifically about workflow and dialogue processes. And I encourage you to visit the official site for the book, crmbizbook.com. Now, one of the things you get with the book is a collection of dynamic CRM solutions containing examples from the book so you can get some hands-on experience. I'm also going to be delivering a series of solution webinars to walk you through them and conduct live Q&A. And those are available for free exclusively to book purchasers. The first two, happy to announce, are scheduled for October 26th and November 9th. But wait, that's not all. I always wanted to say that, by the way. Uh, as a special thank you for taking the time to watch the video, use the following coupon codes when you purchase and save $5 off the retail price for any of the, the following book editions, the print ebook or the print plus ebook editions. Just remember to use the, the coupon code corresponding to the edition that you're purchasing. Okay, that's it. Richard Knutson signing out, and I hope to see you in Vegas or Seattle.